close to you Never let me go I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace help me find a way bring me back to you Good morning, welcome to worship. All of you who are here in person and those who are worshiping online, it's good to be with you this morning and good to have some more folks here. Last week we were pretty slim, so it's good to see a few more faces today. Um, as we begin and prepare for worship, um, we have a few announcements. The first is there is a leadership training um, on January 29th, so that's two weeks from now. It's our district leadership training and has a variety of workshops available as well as worship online this year. It was supposed to be in person, but it's gone to a virtual event, so it makes it easy for anyone to attend. Um, and I think because it's online, it's free. So there are some flyers out on the table next to the bulletins if you wanna pick one up this morning, um, or I can email you a link if you'd rather have that. Um, so consider attending that January uh, 29th from 8.30 to noon. Are there others who have announcements? We are having Ad Council, uh, just a short meeting after worship to approve our budget. The budget was presented at our church conference in the fall, but we didn't um, uh, vote to approve that. So we'll do that today after worship in a brief meeting. Anybody else have announcements today? All right, then let us uh, stand as we're able for our call to worship. There are many gifts, talents, and abilities given by God. There is only one spirit. There are a variety of things we can do to serve the Lord. But is the same Lord we all serve. There are many activities we can do to serve God. Teach, sing, clean, preach, play, work. But all these are activated by God. There are many manifestations of God's <laughs> spirit in the world. It is impossible to list them all. To say that one is better than another is foolish. God gives to each as God chooses. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our opening hymn this morning is Welcome in the Green Book, number 3152.
opening prayer. Gracious and loving God, source of all wholeness, forgiveness, and mercy, may your spirit heal those who are torn, mend those who are broken, and protect those who are fragile. Enable us, O God, through the gift of your steadfast love to remember who we are and whose we are. In your love, may we be true and faithful disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Since we don't have any children present here in the sanctuary, um, I'm going to stay up here to do the children's message so that um, if there are any children on Zoom this morning, they can hear well. Uh, but you can be my, my children this morning um, in the sanctuary. So how many of you like to do puzzles? I uh, wasn't one to really do puzzles, but with COVID and other things, um, I started to, to do some jigsaw puzzles. And then when my family was here for Christmas, I bought a puzzle that we could all work on. And that became a really fun thing for um, all of us to do together. So have you ever had a puzzle that had a missing piece? And that is always a real disappointment, right? And pretty frustrating if... Uh, you've done all this work, and you get to the end, and there's a piece missing. Well, our scripture today is about gifts and all the gifts that we have as individuals. And we all have gifts that God has given us that we can offer in all sorts of ways, not just in the life of the church, but out in the world. And all of those gifts are important to make uh, not only the church work, but also uh, the community work. So um, I'm going to give you an example this morning, and you in the sanctuary can help me out today. How many people do you think it takes with all their different gifts to make worship happen on a Sunday morning? Ten? Five? Six? Everybody? <laughs> well, let's think about that. We have a liturgist, someone who can read well in front of people and can speak clearly. We have a pastor who's uh, preaching a message. Um, again, similar talents to a liturgist, but has uh, done various things to prepare the service and the sermon. We have two musicians people who know music and can play and sing. Uh, so that we're already up to four. We have somebody in the back who is running our sound system and the PowerPoint and the streaming. We have uh, Claire who helps carry the microphone around uh, for uh, announcements and uh, prayer time. Uh, Peter lit the candles and um, make sure the building is ready, and he uh, rang the bell. Um, two ushers, and Anna cleaned for us to make sure our sanctuary was ready to go today. We usually have greeters, and Larry and Connie were going to be here to greet, and they're homesick, but we're already up to 12. And Really, as someone said, we're all important um, because if you all weren't here, there would be no one to respond and to sing and to uh, gather together. And there's so many other gifts that are needed to uh, make our community work the way it is. There are trustees who help make sure the building is kept up. There are uh, people who know numbers like... Uh, Vicki and Claire and Judy and now Lori, who keep track of the finances. Um, and Laura helps with our memorial fund. And just everybody in this room has something that they do um, to help make us who we are as, a, as the body of Christ. So if anybody is missing, like with that puzzle, we do miss them. 
and we miss their contribution to the whole. And so those of you who are at home, even though you are at home today, you're important too and have a, a part to play in, in our church and who we are as the body of Christ. And that might be praying, that might be uh, showing kindness to others in uh, the community or in your family, just many, many ways that we uh, use our personal gifts that God has given us uh, to glorify God, to praise God, and to contribute to a better world. So we give thanks for all of that. So let's pray. If you'd repeat after me, gracious God, thank you for the gifts you have given each of us. Help us to remember that all are important. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, the discernment of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we continue in this season of epiphany. And in this season, we focus on the manifestation of God, the way that God makes God's self known, as well as the ways that we are able to see God's presence in our midst. God is certainly visible in the body of Christ when it is functioning well, and one sign of health is unity. In Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he's reminding the members of this particular congregation that they are called to build one another up, not to criticize or to tear down, because that leads to division rather than unity and oneness. We all have something to contribute to the body of Christ, and our gifts make the body better and stronger. Our contributions are not about our individual success, but are for the good of the community and the congregation, as well as a way of giving God praise, giving God the glory. The love of God, which never ends, helps us to use our own gifts and to appreciate others, bringing us together. Those who were part of the Corinthian church were citizens of the city of Corinth, which is modern-day Turkey on the Mediterranean Sea. And as a port city, Corinth was busy and very cosmopolitan, 
as people came in and out, transporting goods as well as travelers. Those who had been at sea for long periods of time arrived in the city often seeking companionship, for lack of a better word, and opportunities to let off steam. Therefore, Corinth could be seen as an ancient Las Vegas or Sin City. It had that kind of ethos and environment. And so this is the setting of this early church to which Paul is writing his letter. One of the main issues that Paul is addressing in the first letter to the Corinthian church is what my seminary professor, Dr. Robert Jewett, called super apostles. These were individuals who had been given particular spiritual gifts, and they felt pretty proud of themselves and thought that their gifts were great, were super, were excellent. But not only that, they thought that they were more important than the gifts of some of their other Christian brothers and sisters. They had gotten pretty full of themselves, and they were most likely outspoken about their gifts and their superiority, which led to competition and division in the church. So Paul is explaining in this part of the letter that everyone, every follower of Jesus has gifts, and that all of those gifts are important because they are all from the same God. Therefore, competition and criticism have no place. Furthermore, our gifts are given by and activated by the Holy Spirit and have an important and necessary part to play in the functioning of the body of Christ. The body of Christ, as I said a few minutes ago, is not whole or complete without everyone being an active part. Unity means being one, being whole or complete, like that puzzle or like a pie. And the body needs all its parts. Everyone has a role to play, and therefore honoring the gifts of others is important. That means we recognize the gifts and talents of our Christian brothers and sisters, and we encourage them to use those gifts for the common good. When we show thanks and appreciation for the, those gifts, people will continue to offer to use their gifts for the well-being of the entire body. Giving positive feedback helps to build up the community. I know that I like to be thanked and appreciated when I do something, and I know that you do too. It just helps us feel good that we have done something and, and helps us to feel uh, part of the community and its purpose. Now, we don't just use our gifts to get the pat on the back, but knowing that we are using our gifts to make a difference helps us to continue to offer them, which in turn strengthens the body. Now, sometimes we aren't sure that we have gifts or what those gifts are or maybe the gift that we think we have, we're not sure that it's very important or could be useful. So it's helpful if we see a gift in someone else to let them know what it is, to say, I see this in you. I think you could really be an asset to this particular ministry or group or whatever. The gifts that are listed in the passage from 1 Corinthians are not the only possible gifts that we have been given, thank goodness, because they are pretty, um, oh, big gifts, if you will, for lack of a better word. Um, the utterance of wisdom and the utterance of knowledge, um, those are maybe not so grand, but then we get to healing and miracles and prophecy and the discernment of spirits and speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues, and we may think, well, I don't have any of those gifts. Those aren't the only ones. There are many, many other gifts that we have and can offer. No one should feel that if they don't have the gift of healing, for example, that they cannot serve the body of Christ. There are so many ways that we can serve God, and I named some of those a little bit earlier. 
but some of us may need help identifying how and when God is trying to use us. Tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. As a pastor, he led a congregation. But of course, his gifts led him into a specific ministry of social justice through the civil rights movement. And we honor him tomorrow and we see him as an amazing leader. But part of his strength was his humility. As the Montgomery bus boycott was about to begin, the impotence for the movement, King sat in his kitchen and he prayed for courage. He felt like he was faltering and knew that he could not do what was being asked of him without help. That's an example of his humility. He heard God's voice, however, in that prayer, telling him to persevere. In movements like that, in movements for change, all sorts of gifts are needed. King had a gift of speaking, a charism, a charisma that really um, excited people and uh, encouraged them to get on board with what he was talking about. But there were all sorts of other people that were working behind him to help make uh, progress in the area of civil rights. There were community organizers and speakers and strategists and prayer partners. There were those who provided hospitality to people who traveled to the region, um, to the Montgomery area to help. There were uh, participants in specific actions like letter writing campaigns and voter registration and marches and sit-ins and boycotts. In the civil rights movement, there were those in the public eye, those people that we could name, but there were many, many, many other people who were working behind the scenes, not just at major actions or events, but providing support and doing the necessary daily tasks to keep things going. All of those gifts were needed to make progress. Dr. King knew that he was just one small part of that body leading this movement. And he would not have been successful and the movement would not have been successful without each and every person doing their part. Most of us are familiar with Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech and we'll probably see clips of that tomorrow on TV or hear them on the radio or we might see the a meme with a quote um, on our Facebook feed or Instagram feed, but that part of the speech I read this week or listened, I couldn't find uh, the source of where I heard it or read it this week, but uh, part of that speech, that part of the speech, the part where he started to say, I have a dream, that was not originally part of the written manuscript. The action on the Washington Mall that day included uh, music by Mahalia Jackson. And Dr. King, as he was speaking to that crowd of thousands in a typical call response fashion of the black church, Mahalia was sitting behind him and she said when he paused, tell them about the dream, Martin. Tell them about the dream. And so he set aside his manuscript and what followed in that speech is what is most often quoted the Spirit used the gifts of many people that day to help people see what our world could be when racism was conquered. They were the words of Martin, or perhaps the words of God through Martin that were encouraged by Mahalia and the crowd that had gathered that day. And if you watch video clips of that speech, Dr. King is surrounded by all sorts of people. Remember that uh, on the Lincoln Memorial on the stage there, it was just full of people. He had a team of individuals who were with him through it all, helping him to strategize, giving him advice, helping him to write his speech, providing moral support and nudging him to take another step. All of those people were important. Even those people who had just come to Washington that day to listen, they had a part to play. January 
has become a time in our annual conference for retreats and trainings. And this week I gathered virtually with pastors of the Prairie North and the Prairie South districts and our bishop for a day apart. That was on Thursday. And because it had uh, changed from in-person to virtual, it was only for a half of a day. But hearing the words from our bishop, our Episcopal leader, as well as reflections from my colleagues was one of those times where all those pieces were clearly needed because it was affirming, it was helpful in the midst of this challenging time to be with that part of the body. And in two weeks, as I shared in the announcement, our district is providing a leadership training for lay people in a variety of ministry areas, an opportunity for you to gather virtually for education but also to be nurtured and to connect with other people who are part of the body of Christ, who are in the trenches, so to speak, with you as lay people. These opportunities to strengthen our gifts and join with others is what builds up the body, is what helps to unify us. We feel a greater sense of connection to other Christians, other believers, while at the same time, we have the chance to be encouraged and built up ourselves. And as we return back to our local congregations and places of ministry, we bring energy and positivity. We are children of God. We talked about that last week. And we are servants of one God, of one spirit, of one Lord. We are one we live in a nation that is so full of division. And yet our scripture reminds us that our diversity, our variety of gifts is a blessing because each piece adds to the whole. God's love is manifest in our different gifts and the way that they are used in the world for good. Competition and feelings of superiority like those super apostles, that is what leads to division. But humility and love lead to strength and unity and justice. So let us sing our hymn of response, which so wonderfully summarizes this message, captures this message from Paul's letter. If you'd stand as you're able as we sing together, many gifts, one spirit, which is in uh, the red hymnal on page 114.
be seated. We now respond to God's word with the offering of our prayers of joy and concern. Those on our prayer list are Connie Hood, Donna Turner, Connie Taylor Nelson, Jan Thurlby, Ray Meyer, Kurt Mafis, Philip Termini, and Pat Heinsen. God in your mercy. We also want to add uh, Larry Warden to the list. He um, probably has uh, the Omicron uh, virus and has been sick for over 10 days. So uh, just prayers for him. Connie had it, I think, as well, but is, is better. But prayers for them. God, in your mercy. Are there other prayer requests this morning? I think we should pray for our health care workers who are helping all the victims of these diseases. They're going through a lot. They're under a lot of stress, so I think they need our prayers. Prayers for our health care workers who are under stress and for hospitals and other places that are understaffed. Uh, prayers for all of them. God, in your mercy. I saw this morning there was a underground volcano eruption in Tonga, which has caused a lot of tsunamis in the Pacific, and so prayers for those folks who may be impacted by that. God in your mercy. There was also a synagogue yesterday. The rabbi and several uh, congregants were taken hostage, so prayers for that congregation as they uh, recover from that trauma. God in your mercy. Are there others? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks and praise for your presence here with us in this place or wherever we are this morning, worshiping you and gathering together through the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the sun and for clear roads that allowed us to uh, get here today. And God, we do pray and lift up all those we've named this morning who are in need of healing, in need of your presence and your courage in the midst of recovery or in the midst of chronic illness. We pray for those recovering from surgery, recovery from the virus, we pray for our healthcare workers, for those impacted by natural disasters and those who are recovering from trauma, particularly from acts of violence and hate. There's so much going on in our world, oh God, that it can seem overwhelming at times. And yet as we gather together as your people, we know that you are at work, that you continue to move and bless us and encourage us to share your love and your care and to be part of your healing as we support one another with cards and calls, food and visits. We know that your love conquers all and we see signs of that love not only in one another but in the ways the church is working out in the world to provide support and care to your people who are in need. And we do this because of your son, Jesus Christ, who came to earth as a human to live the lives that we live and to share your love and to show us how to be as people of justice and hope. So we pray in his name together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Let us continue to respond to God's word with the gifts of our offerings this morning, and uh, neither of our assigned ushers are here today, so um, I'm wondering if Claire and Matthew could receive the offering this morning, if you'd come forward as we uh, dedicate ourselves to God. A thousand times I've failed, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again till I'm caught in your grace? Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond. Our prayer of dedication, gracious and generous God, we dedicate these gifts from the work of our hands that they may glorify you. May our giving remind us of your claim on our lives and grow in our hearts a spirit of generosity and care. Amen. Our hymn of sending is Come, Let Us Dream in the Green Book, number 3157.
And now from the one who is indeed the giver of all good gifts, go and share what God has given you. Go and proclaim that God's love is here. Go in the name of God's spirit to make all things new. Amen.